Hey guys, back again. Now, I got another interesting package. Now, if you've seen my last video and read the description on it, you would see that I would be getting EverDrives for pretty much most of my older gaming systems. Now, next up I have the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive for your worldwide viewers, EverDrive. Now, this is the same basic idea as the one from the NES that I showed you a couple weeks ago. Where you put an SD card at the top. I don't know if you can see it. It looks too dark. It's black. But yeah, you put an SD card with a bunch of ROMs on it. And you pretty much have all games in one place. Ex except for a, cu a couple games that don't work. But I'll get into the details later when I actually show footage of the thing in action but yeah let's get a look at the cartridge oh, it's kind of hard to see this camera the glare and it's black so see it just looks like a regular shaped genesis cartridge there's one difference you, you may know here there's a little notch on the side now that's because the Japanese Mega Drive has a cartridge lock so because this is designed this way it's pretty much region free I mean even if you take the circuit board out it's region free as well as with many other Mega Drive or Genesis carts and see in the back it doesn't say anything on it this was made by Crix, the same guy who made the NES EverDrive. But I don't see his name anywhere on here. I guess this must be a custom label. Got this on eBay. Some guy selling it in Canada. He was, I was lucky enough to get an SD card from him as well. See at the top, the SD card, I have it sticking out. And... I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little button at the top. Now, aside from the fact it, it plays pretty much all Sega Genesis or Mega Drive games, it also plays Master System games. Now, for those that don't know, that was Sega's first system. It came out probably a year after the NES did, but... As many of you guys know, it wasn't really that popular in, in the U.S. So, now you people in Europe, you probably might know this pretty well. As opposed to the NES. As it was the reverse effect there that the NES was here. But yeah, anyway. This is the pause button for Sega Master System games, and this is because the Master System itself had the pause button on the system instead of the controller, which is kind of dumb that you have to get up to actually pause the game. <laughs> Keeps people from being lazy. But yeah, anyway. Now, it, there isn't much to show you on the cart like the NES one, but all right. Now, I would show you a video of how to set this thing up, but lately my laptop's been having SD card issues. That it wouldn't read my SD card sometimes, or and sometimes it'll load up, but then stop working probably 30 minutes later, maybe even two seconds later. I don't, I don't know what's wrong with it. But yeah, if it works, I'll. I'll add that to the video but if not then I don't care oh. and that's it for the cart itself it's just an ordinary Genesis cart with a notch on the side so all right let's get into part two See here I got the SD card loaded. Now I don't think you have to have a firmware 
OS on the S on the Ruby the SD card like the um like the NES ever drive you had to because what I think it is you download the, the OS and you flash it to the ever drive itself and as I said before the guy gave me an SD card with it so these manuals he downloaded them I didn't so I, I, I I would expect that you could just go on Google and just write EverDrive MD man user manual or something like that and or OS update and it'll it'll pop up. But you know anyway, let, let's get into how to set the ROMs up because like the NES version you have to separate if you have a lot of ROMs you have to put them in different folders so as you can see here I got mine sorted by alphabet numbered files to letter M and N through Z now this has a larger file number limit see here I have 439 I think the NES one was like 256 or something like that but I'm not entirely sure but this is just how I had it set up so and it works for me and it just pretty much takes any format of ROM you know you can just go on the internet and download a common ROM I'm not gonna tell you any sites because that would be illegal but you know <sighs> assuming you get the EverDrive you would probably know how to do these things anyway but you know I'm just showing you if for those that don't know okay now let's get into the main part of the video the game so see here I got the EverDrive MD in the model 1 Sega Genesis see I don't know you see all in there but it's all set up and I'm now I'm gonna switch to the DVD recording all right so here goes. Go. <clears throat> Alright. So. I got it all plugged in. Now, what you see here is a menu. See, the first thing is play game. We're not going to do anything with that yet select game options cheats and toolbox now I only got this today so I really haven't had much time to look at the options so let's look at them for the first time now options hard reset I guess this means that when you press reset on the system it resets the game and not the um, and not to the menu similar to how the NES EverDrive did it where you press reset and it goes straight to the the menu here I guess because I have hard reset on it just resets the game Jenny 3 mode I guess this means it's all I guess this is for the Model 3 Genesis which I don't have one anymore so I wouldn't be able to tell you what it does if it's on. SRAM auto backup. Um, I don't know what this does, but it probably backs up the save and it's off. But I was playing a game earlier and I saved and it seemed to work fine. So without messing with the settings and region free on so you can as you can tell you can play any ROM any uh, I'm not sure about the kind of ROMs that will say this will not work on your PAL system or vice versa I don't know anything about those ROMs but yeah as I said earlier the cart shape is 
meant for region free. So I wouldn't see why certain games wouldn't work. Now cheats. It's just game genie codes, which I don't have any. So or I don't know any game genie codes, but I should say. But as you can tell you can enter up to let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Up to 22 codes. Wow, well, that's a lot. On the real thing, you could probably only do like three or four codes. And you can probably load a file with Game Genie codes as well, which is pretty cool. Toolbox. Is it save, load, SRAM it's, has something to do with the save games. Device info, SPI speed test, update OS. As I said earlier, this is updatable through the EverDrive itself and not by downloading a file similar to what, the, what you have to do on the NES version. And about, let's see. EverDrive MD flashcard developed by Igor Golubovsky, whatever, whatever. Assembled in Ukraine. Support HTTP Crix.com. Bio Crix Crix BioCrix at gmail.com. It's hard to read. Small text. Assembly date. May 1st, 2011. Wow, that's a long time ago. Distributed by GameJoy84. HTTP shop 107027260 at Taobao.com. Funny site name. And you can see big blue letters GameJoy84 at the bottom. I wonder what this does. Uh, I guess it just tests what system I'm running, which is NTSC, 60 hertz. Device info, it just shows the firmware information. Yeah. So uh, as you, you can probably load a save file from the PC in order for it to work on the EverDrive itself. So now I'll, I'll probably show that a little later, but right now let's just show games in action. Now select game. I put all my ROMs in the ROMs folder. I separated by system. See SG, Sega Genesis, SMS, Master System. And as I said earlier, you have to separate by in, in a certain way because you can't put too many files in one folder or else some of them aren't going to be seen on screen. But yeah, let's just test a common game wait oh. all right come on Sanic where are you Sanic okay and we're going to test Sanic the Hedgehog The fastest thing alive. And for some reason it shows the copyright stuff when you load a ROM. Oh, 
as you can see the game works like it normally should even with the debug mode really long Fudge. all right now as I said earlier I'm gonna have to turn the system on and back off and back on because the hard reset is on because if I just press reset it'll go back to the game I was playing so let me go to select game again and just show a, a typical master system where I'm running uh, let's do Sonic the Hedgehog 2 on Master System which is a different game than the Mega Drive version of Sonic 2 you know the one that we all know and love it's different and I did a video about this version of the game a few years ago but the Game Gear version which is the same thing this few slight differences now with a master system you, game you can only press B and C on the Genesis controller so and as I said earlier the master system didn't have a start button on the controller so I would have to get up and press the pause button on the EverDrive in order to actually pause the game. There may be some mods that you could press the start button on a controller, but I don't really know. And I wouldn't care to do any kind of damage to my controllers, so I'll just leave it as is. This is one a few seconds of actually standing up while playing a game. So now let's change the game. Now if you just go to play game, it'll just load back to whatever ROM you were playing last. So in this case, Sonic 2 again. Let's go back. Yeah, I'm going quick. I really don't want this video to end up being 40 minutes long like the last one. So, you know, select game. Now I'm going to load um, a game that has something to do with saving. So, in this case, I'm going to load Mega Man The Wily Wars, which is a remake of Mega Man 1, 2, and 3 from NES. But a lot of people don't like the controls of this game. And they say that it's a bit slower compared to the original games. But I don't know. I think it's pretty cool. Sometimes there's lag. Even when there's one boss on the screen. But, you know, that's something you can work around. Yeah. 
I heard if you mod the system and overclock it, it won't have any of the slowdown, but I'm not going to go through the trouble to do that. So, you know. As you can see, it shows a, that, remember that save file I loaded? It was a save file I used on an emulator, and it seemed to work perfectly fine. It shows my file all clear. With my Wiley Tower save open. Now this was an added feature to this compilation that is never seen on any other Mega Man game. So this is pretty unique. You can choose any of the weapons from the first three games. I forgot the controls for this part. Fun fact, this is actually one of the most expensive Mega Drive games ever. I think because of how rare it is and because it wasn't officially released in the US on physical form, only through that subscription Sega channel thing they have, which obviously you can't connect to it anymore. I only chose four weapons for the sake of the video. And all of them. All right. Now this EverDrive version doesn't have save states, but there is a Mega EverDrive, which it does, and it is probably forty dollars, forty to fifty dollars more than this EverDrive that I have. So if you really care to splurge on having save states, then that version is for you but apparently it does have faster loading time which as you can see in this everdrive it has really slow loading depending on how big the game is and uh, what was i gonna say also the mega everdrive i heard if you use an unofficial ac adapter Similar to what I use, I use a 3-in-1 NES, SNES, and Mega Drive AC adapter. I hear that the Mega EverDrive wouldn't work with that without it overheating or blowing up, something like that. Some, some, something maybe. Now, I think this is a great purchase because 
as I said in an NES video, in the NES Everdrive video, that retro games are getting more and more expensive each time, each, every, as the day goes on pretty much. You like playing on the real hardware, but don't have the money to buy, keep buying a bunch of games for it, then I think this is for you. It pretty, it's pretty much compatible with nearly every Genesis and Master System game, to my knowledge, except for Virtual Racing, which is has some special chip inside the car. But, other than that, that's it. And, it even works with 32X games, but unfortunately I don't have a 32X or plan to get one. Due to the amount of money it goes for. So. But all in all, it's just a good product, especially in terms of the compatibility. Now, what I have left is to get one, to get some kind of EverDrive or flash card for that Super Nintendo, but as I stated in my EverDrive NES video, that the Super Nintendo has a lot of games that use special hardware, meaning that they wouldn't work on an EverDrive the cheaper ultra the cheap the cheaper flash card which the ever drive is the cheapest but still like good quality flash card. There's also the SD to any SNES which supports some special chip games but not all of them and apparently they're supposed to be getting some more like the super FX chip but I don't see that happening and I really wouldn't want to go spend a lot of money for one of those if it doesn't work with every game yet. I'd rather wait till it either stops production or make it compatible with more games to get something like that for the SNES because I don't, for the price, I don't think it's worth it to get a flash card for that due to the large incompatibility list. But to be fair, I do have a lot of the Super FX games that are worth it, which pretty much only a couple. Star Fox, Yoshi's Island, but you know. Some people might say Doom on SNES, but I don't know, I, I, I hate that version, so... As you can see, I'm pretty much ending this EverDrive video the same way I ended my NES EverDrive video, by playing Top Man's level of Mega Man 3.
All right, so I think I'm just gonna end it here. So overall, buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it today.